But to God be the glory. Did you get the message? Today, we came to glorify the Savior. Our lesson is in Luke 17, 11 through 19. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, he met him ten men that were lepers which stood far off and they lifted their voices and said Jesus master have mercy on us and when he saw them he said unto them go show yourself to the priest and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, said, Where there ten, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that re returned to give thanks or to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Father, thank you for our word today. Lord, I pray that you would uh, get the glory this morning. Bless our message. In Jesus' name, amen. Title today is An Attitude of Gratitude. Jesus is on his way to the cross, to Jerusalem to give his life, to die, to be buried, and he will rise again for the sins of the world. And I say today, thank you, Jesus. On his way, he has an appointment with ten lepers. And as they approach Jesus, my, I thank you, as I, I read this part, I'm so glad that Jesus is approachable. How about you? I'm so glad that we can approach Jesus. But these lepers, they approached him in a distance. And they begin to cry out in a loud voice, Master, have mercy on us. They cried for mercy because of their condition. Sometimes it only comes down to one simple principle. How bad do you want it? You see, they had been cut off from their families, cut off from their friends, cut off from their livelihood because of their condition. You see, my friends, they were dying. And Dr. Jesus gave them this prescription. He gave them instructions to go. That was the instructions that he gave them to go. Is it hard for you to take instructions? I must be talking to me because it is for me. Very hard for me to take instructions. I, I don't have a middle name. My name is Eric Howard. But if I did have a middle name due to what my mom called me when I was little. My name would be Eric Hardheaded Howard. <laughs> and the hardhead meant you're going to do it your way anyway. You're not going to listen to anybody. You're not going to take any instructions from anybody. 
So if I'm not going to take any instructions, I'm going to have to live with the decisions and the consequences that comes from the choices that we make. Is there anybody in here hard-headed? Just can't take simple instruction. But see, out of desperation and no other option but to die, by faith they went and were all made clean from simple instructions from Jesus. He wants to give us some simple instructions and he wants us to live by faith when he gives us these instructions. But wow, in our text, Jesus just gave these lepers their life back. And strangely, in giving these ten lepers their life back, only one of them returned to say thank you. Only one. Verses 15 and 16 mention that. It says, and one of them. Key word. It says, when he saw that he was healed. The nine went on their way, but the one he saw. Oh my goodness. All of his hopes and dreams and everything that he can imagine life to be came from Jesus. So he was the one, listen to this, and when thankfulness begins to erupt in our hearts, he came to recognize that his death-defying position, which was leprosy, had just collided with the great physician, which is Jesus. And then he began to worship. He began to give thanks. Scripture said that he fell on his face at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks. You see, it's not that Jesus cannot give you your life back. But the question would be this morning, what would you do if he does give you your life? The tragedy and the danger is that Jesus has helped. <clears throat> he has healed and he has touched so many people. And that's the reason why he came. But there's so many people that has been touched that has ran back into the world. That has gotten so busy with life itself that have forgot to turn just to say thank you for all that you have done. My, my friends, please don't fall into this. For there's many who have been touched by Jesus and have run back off into the world. John 10.10 10 said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. You know who out? who's out there in the world and is in the world system? Ephesians said it's Satan. He's the prince of the air, the prince of this world system. So many has been touched and have run back off into the world to, to do life, to have a lifestyle. And they forgot to turn and say thank you. If you was to see the business card of Satan himself, on that business card would say wrecking crew. The ones that has not turned and say thank you because of what Jesus has done that has run to the world. Do you know what the world has to offer? The world will wreck you spiritually. I speak to so many people that, that, that don't even want to darken the door of the church any longer because there's something out 
in the world that has their eye. And they have forgotten that God had woke them up this morning. They've forgotten to turn and say thank you. In John 10, the thief does come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said that I've come that you may have life. And have life more abundantly. So instead of running to the world and all that it is, run to Jesus. He not only have life for us, he has an abundant life. The one that returned, he chose the abundant life. He turned to Jesus. Let's hear what Jesus says about it. My friends, today Jesus is not asking a hard question, but he is asking a hard lesson. He's given us a lesson for our hearts. He mentions in verse 17, when Jesus answered and said, Where are the, were there not nine cleansed? But where are the nine? I can hear Jesus being thankful of the one at his feet, but Jesus is also concerned about the ones that went away. Can you hear Jesus saying, where are the nine today? Oh, I have so much to give you if you would only turn around and come back to me. And the one that came back was considered, in man's eye, least likely to succeed. He was a Samaritan. And to Jews, Samaritan was considers nobodies, dogs. But just think, when Jesus heals you and he touches your heart, gratitude begin to well up in your spirit and you have to come back. I would hope that you came to church because you needed more of Jesus today. He is least likely to succeed. And just because you, you came to Jesus and you, you said thank you, don't allow anybody to talk bad about you. It doesn't matter what folks say about you. Continue to sacrifice thank offerings to God and fulfill your vows to the Most High. You know what that means? Take the time to give God the thanks that he rightfully deserve. Have you been doing that lately? You know what God is after? He's not after our money. He's not after our house. He's not after our stuff. He's after our hearts. Psalms 50, 15 says, call on the Lord in the day of trouble and he will deliver you and you will honor him. My friends, as we close, Jesus is the one that can stand by his promises. That when you are out in the world and you have trouble, somebody may have trouble today, that you can call on the Lord in your situation that he may deliver you and you will honor him. You see, thankfulness is an attitude expressed in gratitude. A return kindness and appreciation for what he has done for us. That song was my tribute to God today. But as we close, here's the question. Would you be the one? Would you be the one that turns and says thank you for all that you have done for me? Father God, I thank you for our word today. As Jesus is speaking to us all personally about this one, this one that 
It's grateful and thanking you for everything. Lord, I thank you for revealing your yourself to us. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for caring for us. Even in the midst of our hurts, our agonies, our griefs, and our pain, when it seems like no one else is there, you are. I pray that this Thanksgiving and each and every day that we wake up, that we cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.